Tom Harris joining us in about eight minutes. He's there at the Copenhagen World Government Summit. <laughs> I tell you, all this mainstream media that's still trying to say there's no world government, they look really stupid. As the U.N. and others openly announce that they haven't got, quite gotten their propaganda uh, together. I think it's great. Uh, but, uh, G. Edward, in the last six, seven minutes we have with you, I want to give you the floor. We were talking during the break. You said it, it, it is really coming to a head. And I agree with the long view of history. They're not going to give up overnight. But I've given the analogy of Climate Gate being the Death Star plans getting out. And now, with their whole program in disarray, the Death Star is blown up. But there's still Imperial Star Destroyers. The Empire is still occupying all our systems. They're still in all our nations. Uh, but it's shown the rebellion that... If we can blow up one of their biggest operations in the info war, we can destroy these people. We can defeat them with the truth. That's so true. And, and what can I add to that except that the thought that's always on my mind is it's relatively easy for people to know what they don't want. We can see this growing tyranny. We can see the lies. We can see the deceit. We can see the increasing taxes. We can see the devastation of our purchasing power of our monetary unit. We can see uh, the dumbing down of the kids in school. We can see all of these things, and we know we don't want that. And so it's easy, relatively easy, to get people networked together and organized together. We're going to fight this. We're going to bring these people down. I long to hear people talk about what are we going to replace it with. I want to hear more. Congress controlling our currency, uh, cutting down the size of government, getting state sovereignty, getting rid of the government-run public schools, uh, getting uh, not making the superheroes uh, be sports people or actors, but being inventors again, getting back to a renaissance society. Exactly. And also even deeper than that, we could go and talk about political principles. What is the proper function of the state? What is the ideal system? Where did our system go wrong or did it go wrong? These are the things that I want to hear more in the debate. And I recognize you have to mobilize people on the flashpoint, the anger point. You know, this is what they don't like. But I, I'm, the reason I created Freedom Force, as you so well know, is because I wanted people to think about the political and ideological principles, the things that we should be building into the system after we recapture control of it and we have a chance to create a better system. What will it be? What would it look like, you see? And I, I always want people to learn and think about the differences between collectivism and individualism. I want to hear those words used more often. And we've got to educate people the horrors of collectivism. We know this animal kills people, enslaves people. It, 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 misery and pain is its children. Yes, and I, what I want to see is for people to recognize that this is the same animal, whether it is in Nazi Germany or Red China, even today, or in Cuba, uh, or in if it's growing in the United States, it's just the same animal. So that's what I want to to have people think about. What is collectivism? And um, because once you understand the principles of collectivism, you will not tolerate its growth even in your own country. So, yes, I'm very I'm optimistic about this rising tide of resistance to the growing tyranny. But now uh, I think it's time for us to really focus on. Uh, having people recognize on the positive things we want to replace it with. And Freedom Force International does that. Give us your family of websites. Yeah, it is a family of websites. The Freedom Force website is where it, we call it the think tank of, of our little world, and that's freedomforceinternational.org. A lot of material there to read and study. The commercial site is Reality Zone. That's where people can buy our audios and our videos and our books, and that's realityzone.com. Of course, we invite everybody to take our free weekly newsletter, and uh, that's called the Unfiltered News. And they can get that simply by going to Reality Zone on the landing page, and there's an, an they can see a, a a lot of great material. You've been fighting this collectivist takeover for more than forty years. You're speaking tonight at Brave New Books in Austin, and Saturday at the Courtyard Austin downtown, nine forty-five in the morning. People should get there earlier than that, though. G. Edward Griffin, thank you for coming into studio with well, us. Thank you, Alex. It's always a pleasure to be here. Keep it up. I'll try. You keep it up, too. You're a real tiger in the fight for liberty. Had Lord Moncton on today. You've been in studio. This has been amazing. Thank you, G. Edward right, Griffin. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am extremely honored here today uh, to have engineer Tom Harris, executive director of the International Climate Science Coalition, a massive scientific 
uh, group set up to counter the IPCC science fraud that's been proven to be a premeditated fraud. We don't just have the Climate Gate documents. We have the U.N. documents last week where they've been organizing the fraud together. And he is in Copenhagen right now putting on their own conference. The website is Copenhagen climatechange.org or climatescienceinternational.org. And for the last 22 minutes of this radio transmission from Copenhagen, Tom Harris joins us. Tom, thank you for spending time today. Yeah, that's great, Alan. So much is going on. In a nutshell, tell us about your group, your take on Climate Gate, uh, the text of the Danish text of the treaty where the third world will actually have to make more cuts than the West, devastating them. Lord Moncton talked about the millions that will kill a year. Just look what the ethanol scam has done. And uh, where you think this, uh, this, 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 this conference is going in light of all this evidence of fraud coming out? Yeah, well, to start out with, the International Climate Science Coalition is the nonprofit group of scientists who were not able to get into most of the U.N. activities. Some of them actually were, but they disagreed with the U.N. Uh, we have with us about uh, 60 scientists who are our, our advisors, and it was decided that we should actually ask the U.N. for some basic data because, you know, one of the main concerns after ClimateGate was if the temperature data is corrupted, how much else is? And, you know, we hear about extreme weather events increasing and all that sort of thing, but many of these scientists are actually experts in that field, and they know that the extreme weather records were set in the 1800s and early 1900s when it comes to typhoons and hurricanes and things like that. So instead of actually making the point to the U.N. Uh, that they're wrong, we thought, well, look, if they're not sharing data on temperature, why can't we get them to share data on everything else? So we sent an open letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations. And it's interesting, the project actually started about a month ago uh, before the CRU scandal, you know, the climate gate. And at that time, you know, we were getting signature a day or something like that. But after the uh, scandal in England, we've been swamped with signatures. We've been getting hundreds of signatures of leading scientists from around the world who are now saying, well, if that data was wrong and manipulated, we want to see all the data. So uh, I went through the list, and, you know, some of them are, are leading experts, but they're not necessarily climate experts. So I pulled out 150 of them who actually are climate experts from 17 different countries who are now demanding that the data be released in a whole range of fields. And it's going to be very interesting to see what the U.N. do, because in some cases, like their polar bear scare, the data shows that the population has more than doubled since 1960, and that they've been around for about 70,000 years, during which time it was hotter than their forecasting for the 21st century. So it's going to be tough for the U.N. to answer our challenge. Well, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure you've been following that in New Zealand and Australia and Canada, NOAA, NASA, other universities are being caught fixing the data along with the IPCC, that the U.N. had this strategy, uh, that people were already trying to get the Climate Research Center data because they were already being caught in fraud by the research. But now we know that it's premeditated. And so this is just the tip of the iceberg as more whistleblowers come out, more scientists oh, yeah. that were persecuted. I mean, I, I think it's safe to say that the beginning of the end uh, of these charlatans has begun. Do you agree that they're starting to really bleed out? Oh, yeah, exactly. And I think that if they do start to respond to our challenge, uh, you know, in a way it would be good because, uh, well, I mean, from our point of view, it would be good because then we can find more of these flaws. But the fact that the U.N. probably won't respond to our challenge is actually an admission of guilt. Because if you think about it, this data was collected with public money. It shouldn't have been 17 years of trying to get the data before a whistleblower, who's probably the cause of this, not a leaker, uh, not a, uh, I should say, hacker. Um, it, it, it shouldn't have taken 17 years to get the basic data that was, being used to generate public policy. And so I think that ClimateGate has been a, a great Christmas, Christmas gift to us because it's shown an example of what they've suspected for years, and that is that when you look at the real data, much of the climate scare is just simply not there. Well, I mean, you talk about polar bears. I have seen on television they're teaching children that penguins are drowning when it's an aquatic bird that can barely walk and can't fly because it's meant to swim. Polar bears, the greatest land uh, swimming animal, routinely swim over 100 miles, have been recorded to swim over 300. They hunt on ice packs. 
But just two weeks ago, Austin News said the polar bears are all dying, they're drowning. They showed video of them floating on ice packs where they're out killing seals in beluga. Uh, the fraud of the hockey stick, the fraud of carbon dioxide simultaneously with temperature rise when it comes, as you know, hundreds of years after. I mean, everything these people say, the oceans will turn into acid, acid rain. In the 70s, we, Holdren said we had to put out giant terraforming factories to double CO2 or we'd be in an ice age by 2000. I mean, yeah. the level of fraudulent quackery uh, is just, this is clearly the greatest scientific fraud in history. Uh, can you comment on that and then what you're witnessing in Copenhagen? 